Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting, titillating, orgasmic edition of Radical Rock and Record Reviews. And I'm your host, Wild Ride bassist Mick Watkins, otherwise known as Dick Twatkins. And today, guys, we're going to be reviewing the brand new album from Thrash Metal Veterans, Thrash Metal Legends. I'm talking about Megadeth with their 16th album, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Oh, yeah. So let's take a look at it right there, right off the bat. There's a cool album cover. It kind of shows uh, Vic Rattlehead, our good old buddy Vic Rattlehead, kind of a, you know, kind of like a very frontier kind of era, Wild West looking kind of shit going on. As an album cover, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not one of my favorite Megadeth album covers. I do like the logo. I like the color of the logo. But if you look at the album cover, it's kind of dark, man. It's kind of dark. You know, let's take it out of the let's take it out of the jewel case so you can get a good look at it. To take a good look at it. Yeah. So there you go. You can get a better look at it right there. See, it's a little dark. I think in some places it should have been lightened up a little bit. But none the fuck it. It's a brand new Megadeth. It's been six long years. And I believe that's been the longest gap in between Megadeth albums, six years. Last one was uh, Dystopia in 2016. And I gotta say, right out, right out of the gate, I was not, I know this is a, I'm in the minority, but I was not the biggest fan of Dystopia for some reason. I guess because I felt Metallica's hardwired to self-destruct totally obliterated Dystopia that year. All my focus was on Metallica the hardwired to self-destruct that maybe I didn't give Megadeth dystopia the, the attention that it deserved. Maybe I need to reinvestigate that. But anyway, here you go. The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. The 16th album from Dave Mustaine and the Boys in Megadeth. Speaking of the Boys in Megadeth, this is the first album to feature the current lineup, the full current lineup of Dave Mustaine, Kiko Lurario on lead guitar, Dirk Bert Berger on drums and the return of James Lomenzo on bass. Now, well, I will say James Lomenzo is a mighty bass player and his bass playing kills it on this fucking album. I will say that, dude, I'm kind of bummed. I'm kind of bummed that David Ellison Jr. is in a mega death because honestly, when it comes to heavy metal bass players, I don't think you get much better than David Ellison. You know, a Jr., I think he's a fucking... He's such an important, integral part of Megadeth to me. I know some people might be like, well, James Lomenzo does great, and he does, but honestly, I think this album would have been a lot better if it would have had fucking Junior holding down the low end in the rhythm section. Yeah! But nonetheless, let's get down to the review for Megadeth's mighty, mighty, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, mighty, the sick, the dying. And the dead! Oh, here you go, and you know, there's a picture of Dave and the boys. Dave and the boys. There you go, got that little glare, but it'll be all right. So let's get down into it. As always, Radical Rock and Record Reviews. Got my handy dandy notebook, took some notes, and here you go. We're gonna kick it off right now with track number one, the title track, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. The intro kind of caught me off guard. It's very kind of un megadeth sounding but then it kicks into a riff that totally encapsulates all eras of Megadeth. You got a little bit of Peace Cells. You got a little bit of uh, Rust in Peace. You got a little bit of Endgame going on in there. Fucking killer, killer song. The Sick, The Dying, of The Dead. One of my favorite tracks on the new Megadeth album. Equal parts, thrash, melody, hooks, shred magic. And of course, Dave Mustaine sounds great. Pretty much a perfect Megadeth song, and what a way to kick off a mighty ball-stomping, nipple-twisting, great album. I mean, it's fucking awesome. Track number two, Life in Hell, which is playing in the background. Badass thrashing tune. I love when Dave Mustaine sings about being a sleazy, creepy dude. You know, kind of sounds like a mixture of Peace Sales and Endgame era. This is what I want from Megadeth. It's true, guys, it's true. Uh, track number three, Night Stalker. Brutal song. Fuck! Is Dave Mustaine pissed off? You know, Dave Mustaine, a couple years ago, dude. Honestly, 
I kind of thought and feared that we were going to lose Dave Mustaine to cancer. But nonetheless, Dave Mustaine kicked cancer right in the fucking nutsack. And he survived, thankfully. So Dave Mustaine, he's pissed off. He's got a lot of just yeah, aggression in this album. I love it. His voice, even though he went through throat cancer, his voice is top notch for this era of Mega Dev, of Mega Dave. So Dave Mustaine's pissed off as fuck. As a single, honestly, though, the song didn't really catch me too much. I remember hearing Night Stalker, watch the video on YouTube quite a few times. I was kind of like, yeah, this is kind of more the dystopia style that didn't really, you know, didn't really click with me. But nonetheless, in an album context, it works. And then I got worried when I seen that Ice-T was going to be featured on it because as watchers of this program know, Radical Rock and Record Views, Wild Ride bassist Mick Watkins, otherwise known as Dick Watkins. I'm not a hip hop fan. I'm not a fan of rap. It does nothing for me. As a matter of fact, I kind of loathe and kind of, I, I kind of hate rap. I hate hip hop, whatever you want to call it. I don't like it. So seeing Ice-T's inclusion on this album, I was like, fuck. Oh God, here we go. But nonetheless, Ice-T's inclusion, it worked. He doesn't really rap, he just kind of talks. He does this kind of cool talking bit and it kind of, you know, Ice-T's a badass dude. He's a badass. Come on. I don't like rap, but I do have respect for ice T's a legend. And then his voice, his voice has just got this fucking attitude to it. Totally fits the song. No bullshit rapping. Very haunting song. Classic Dave lyrics of war and death. Track number four, Dogs of Chernobyl. Cool song. This is kind of where the album for me kind of slows down a little bit. Still good, but it's kind of slows down a little bit. Cool song, kind of samey in places compared to the last couple tracks. In album context, it works. I just kind of feel that this song, nothing really stands out about it. Nothing really kind of, you know, nothing really, I don't know. It's cool, but it's nothing to write home about, in my opinion. Track number five, Sacrifice. Main riff kills, chorus riff kills. Very cool groove in this song, man. Badass evil lyrics in the style of the first three albums. Killing is my business. Business is good. Uh, peace sells, but who's buying it? So far, so good, so what? That was very evil. Kind of grim, Dave Mustaine. My favorite era of the band. Uh, yeah, standout track, Sacrifice Kicks Ass. Track number six, Chunky! Another standout track. Now the album's starting to pick up again a little bit after Dogs of Chernobyl and to some degree Night Stalker, you know. Uh, another standout track would sound killer live. Excellent solo section, one of the best parts on the whole fucking album. Love the classic Dave Mustaine snarl, that wow, that kind of thing he does, that wow. Love that. One of my favorites on the album, Junkie. It's cool shit. Psychopathy, track number seven. Pointless but cool intro. Uh, I mean, it's cool. You should have just tacked it on to the gang of track eight, Killing Time. Very mid 90s era sounding, you know, got a little bit of countdown to extinction, euthanasia, which letting it let letting it be known. I love euthanasia. Euthanasia is one of my favorite Megadeth albums. Could have been on Euthanasia or maybe even Cryptic Writings. Cool song. But honestly, Killing Time is better than a lot of the stuff on Cryptic Writings, even though it's an album that I dig. Track number nine, Soldier On. Definitely the anthem of the album and an absolute banger of a tune. My opinion, could be a future Megadeth classic. Track number 10, my favorite track on the album. I think this song's a total banger. The song kicks ass, Celebutant. My notes say, this song kicks in with a riff. Straight off of Kill em All, straight off of Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. Straight up, early 80s thrash metal goodness, a little bit of that new wave of tradition, or excuse me, new wave of British heavy metal influence, that style, you know, that angel witch, diamond head kind of style of ripping, badass stuff, just a rocking fun song, my favorite song on the sick and dying of the dead, I've always enjoyed the lighter, more cynical side of Dave Mustaine's lyrics, you know, lots of times Dave Mustaine likes to talk about polit politics, war, death, and stuff like that. You know, and I love that stuff. But I also dig when Dave gets a little bit lighthearted, a little cynical, a little snarky, a little smart ass, and does cool stuff like this song. And off the, the album, uh, The System Has Failed, something that I'm not. 
which I thought was totally a big fuck you to James and Lars. Could be, who knows? Yeah, uh, this song is kind of like a middle finger to the self-important TikTok generation. Ripping solo section, this song has it all. Like I said, Celebutant, my favorite song off of the sick, the dying, and the dead. Track number 11, Mission to Mars. Now I know you're on the Rock and Metal Combat podcast, pages on Facebook, the RMCP Army pages on Facebook. A lot of people have been ripping this song kind of up. A lot of people, and in other forums that I'm in, a lot of people kind of talk shit about Mission to Mars because the lyrics are stupid and stuff. And you know what? The lyrics are kind of stupid. They are kind of cheesy. But dude, who cares? I think it's a badass fucking tune. And it's my second favorite track on the album. I'm digging some Mission to Mars. Like my notes say, my second favorite song on the album, more of a straight up heavy metal song. Lyrics are kind of dumb, but they're fun, and that's what I like in music. I like music that makes me feel good. I like music that makes me happy. I like music that makes me want to party! You know, fuck, there's iced tea in the background. Uh, Amazing rhythm section in the middle ending section. Badass tune, Mission to Mars rules in my humble opinion, okay? Track number 12, the final track on the sick, the dying, and the dead. We'll be back, classic Megadeth. Just a brutal technical composition of a song. Love the halftime solo section. Such a twisted, evil sounding riff. So there you go, that's my review of the 16th uh, Megadeth album, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. And here's my, to sum it all up, sum up the feelings of Dick Twadkins, my overall thoughts. I believe I listened to this album, listen to this album right here. I believe I gave it five or six good listens all the way through before I gave you this review. So, you know, here's my synopsis once again. All in all, a solid Megadeth album. And in my opinion, a major improvement over Dystopia. I enjoyed it more as a full-length cohesive album as opposed to just listening to the singles and cherry-picking the individual tracks. It works better as a body of work than it does just, well, I think I'm gonna listen to Dogs of Chernobyl. Or I'm gonna listen to Celebutant, which that song works for me. But you know what I mean. This album, as a full-on album, it kills as a body of work. Glad to hear Dave cancer-free, pissed off, and kicking ass. So overall, on the Dick Twatkin's scale of ranking and ratings, I would give this album four stars, which means killer. And that's my thoughts on Megadeth, 16th album, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. Guys, I want to thank you all for tuning in, checking out the episode, subscribing to the channel. And if you haven't already, and if you like my videos, if you want to hang out with Dick Twykin some more, talk about hard rock and heavy metal and badass shit, hit the subscription button. Do me a favor. And if we ever hang out in person, I'll toast you a Little Kings, and I'll toast you a Coors Light. My good old Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, hell yeah. So until next time, guys, I will see you later. Keep rocking and keep rolling, baby. Check out my band Wild Ride, W-Y-L-D-R-Y-D-E on Facebook, official Wild Ride on Instagram. Check us out on Bandcamp. Check us out on Spotify, YouTube, all that streaming shit. And if you want a CD, cruise on over to Bandcamp, www.wildride.bandcamp.com and pick up a CD. And if you order it from me, I can autograph it. I'll get the other guys to do it too. And we'll all rock out and have a merry old gay time together. It'll be fucking awesome. Guys, I will see you next time. Peace. Ah. See you.